Please uh, welcome to the stage uh, a lady who has given us such brilliant films uh, with her incredible writing talent uh, amongst those X-Men, Kick-Ass and uh, Stardust. Uh, a man who scared the bejesus out of me with uh, Eden Lake and has now done the same with this. Uh, and uh, another gentleman who needs no introduction, Jane Goldman, James Watkins and Daniel Radcliffe. Hi. 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 Wow. Wow. What a great turnout we have for yeah, you all. Yeah, it's amazing. Hello, everybody. Um, <laughs> we, we've got to start off by saying congratulations, an amazing opening week you've had in the States as well, which is absolutely brilliant for, for, for a British film and, and for you all, so congratulations on that. Oh, um, Jane, can I start with you? Um, because Thank the you. words have, have come from you, which obviously came from the, uh, the original novel. What was it about this, this project, this book that, that caught your attention that you wanted to... Well, I think The Woman in Black is just the perfect classic ghost story. It's got all the ingredients, um, and I love that it has a real emotional heart to it, as well as being absolutely terrifying, and that was what we all wanted the film to be as yeah. well. Yeah. Were you, were, were you terrified when you read the book? Is it the type of book, having not read it, that does terif terrify you off the page? Yeah, it definitely does. It's definitely a book you don't want to sort of read on your own in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> and in terms of, of then translating that for, for the big screen, was it an easy process for you? Being, being such a fan of it as well. Um, it, was, it was an interesting process. I mean, I think you always um, want to add layers for a film. Um, yeah. And, uh, but yeah, being a fan of it, it was just important to me to stay true to the spirit of it. But most of all, to, um, you know, uh, just to hope that I could uh, carry over that, the, the way of making people care about Arthur and yeah. making it as frightening as possible. And hopefully... I did my job, and then <laughs> Dan and James uh, added to that in spades. James, f for you, um, what was the appeal for this this project? It was Jane's script. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think probably the same for you. It, pretty much, yeah. I mean, it was uh, the fact that it was, um, you know, th it was a horror film, but it felt unusual for the genre, and it did have, you know, really well developed characters, and and uh, they didn't, the characters didn't feel like they had just been uh, there to set up scares later yeah, yeah. on. They felt like real people and real relationships. And, um, yeah, and to get, a, to get a horror film that is so strong thematically as well in terms of dealing with loss and grief and about what happens to us if we can't move on from a loss, um, you know, that seemed unusual to me. And I like anything that's a little bit off the beaten track. Well, yeah, and it, it's what's, what's great about it as well is it's, it's, it's so... Um authentic and unique out there, I think, as well, in terms of that genre, in terms of it doesn't rely on anything apart from great characters, a great story, depth, emotion, but also that scare factor and getting that right is really important, I think. Well, that, I mean, Balance. there was a, there was, you know, one of the things I loved was the fact that I got to this chunk in the middle of the script, which was about 15 pages with no dialogue. <laughs> and uh, you just never see that, ever. Um, and no one's mad enough to try and do that. <laughs> the artist has slightly rained on our parade, really. We thought our 20 minutes, <laughs> our 20 minutes of silence in the middle of the movie was a little bit impressive. And We're then the scarier. artist... Uh, yeah, we are much scarier. Um, the artist has no scares. Um, but, um, yeah, so, uh, you know, that, uh, I forgot what I was talking about. Somebody else carry on. <laughs> How about getting that balance right? About it being, you know, the depth of the, the There's story. There's a lot of films out now that are gory, yeah. violent, um, but that's not necessarily... You know, nasty isn't the same as scary, and our film is scary. You know, it gives people a real roller coaster ride, but it does so by working through, you know, through shadows, through darkness, through working on the imagination. Yeah. And actually, we always talked about this that what you can imagine, you know, once your brain gets to work, is always going to be scarier than anything you can shoot. And that was what was in Susan's book, and that was what's in Jane's script. And you know, we, that's what we tried to be true to, really. Yeah. Location as well in this film seems so important and, and how, how British it looks, but also just how terrifying those actual physical things, mm. I guess, add to the, to the well, whole process. It's interesting because the Americans are so brilliant at mythologizing their landscape. You know, you see, you go to, you see LA on film, you see New York, you see mm. you know, Monument Valley and Westerns, whatever it is. And we've got such brilliant landscape here, we've got such brilliant sort of architecture and iconography, and, 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 and we should represent it. We should, you know, get those British things on film. Yeah. And um, so it's such an opportunity, and, and so as British filmmakers, that's sort of what we want to do. And fog. Great fog. fog. <laughs> which we're just about to see in this clip, which is uh, when, uh, when Arthur gets to the, the house for the first time, and, uh, and he leaves to, to kind of uh, explore these things that he thinks he's seen and hearing. So let's have a look at this clip. We stopped it there. Oh, we stopped it there uh, for yeah. a reason. Because <laughs> don't know we don't want to give anything away with the film as well, because that's the whole point of it. Is you, don't, you don't know what's coming, which is brilliant about it. Were you scared on set at any point? I mean, because you know, you were in that house. You were. It looks scary to be 
to be in. To I be mean, it, no, I mean, Cave, Cave Quinn, our production designer, uh, it was it was an amazing set. Mm. I mean, uh, when one you can really kind of feel lost in and 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 really it's it added to the atmosphere of the scenes, you know, immeasurably to, mm. to have it be there. But um, no, you don't really get scared on set. I mean, you're okay. always very much aware that the crew is there around you. So it's it's sort of you can't quite lose yourself entirely. Uh, the only thing that became scary on the film was the fact that Ryan, my body double, and I started jumping out at each other from various points around the set because that's the sort of thing you do when you've been filming for a couple of weeks. And, <laughs> and you know, um, so yeah, there was there was a bit of that going on. But unfortunately, no no genuine scares. We actually had quite a nice time. Are you are you are you easily scared as people or individually? Are you quite or are you you quite I'm hardcore? I am. I'm scared quite easily. Yeah, I mean not by ghosts, but but you know, middle of the night when you you hear a noise mm -hmm. or you see something out the window or a branch or something. I think everybody that plays on everybody's imagination. Yeah, Jane. Definitely. Um, I'm quite hard to scare. Although I have to admit, I collect those Victorian wind-up toys that I don't know if they're in the clip that, um, that was shown earlier but that there's uh, pretty much I have some of exactly the same ones as they're in the film and sometimes if you come down at night for a glass of water and catch them out of the corner of your eye it's pretty scary. <laughs> those weird monkey ones yeah. with the drums and stuff and the cymbals. Yeah, My favourite is there's a, there's a, there's a cat do that polishes the shoe I've, randomly. Well, yeah, I, I like him. him. Jane, do you have the cat that polishes the shoe? That's my favourite I don't, toys. I know. That's I've, my favourite. I would dearly it's love great. to have that. Yeah. It's beautiful. Some of them, they're really expensive and all those toys we have a load of very old very creepy toys in the film that are all owned by one woman in mm. America we believe <laughs> who really? just has really? collected them yeah she lives in I think the middle of the desert I don't know why I think that but I think lives in the middle of the desert with a Funny that. Victorian you probably just made that up I might have just that might have been a dream I had <laughs> I had a really nice story about because it, it sounds like it was a great atmosphere on set and it was you know it's quite a small cast and you went to this this it was a little village in Yorkshire that you filmed in as well and I believe there was a uh, pub quiz going on yeah. in uh, yeah. the yeah, he, he's, a, he's like was. evil at pub quizzes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah uh, no, the, 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 the quiz was actually, it was run by a guy whose surname was Potter. Brilliant. And he did this thing every week which he called Potter's Pub Quiz. And the day I was there at his pub quiz, he was ill. Oh! And he didn't, and he didn't meet, but like, we, I, I came in and we came, we came like, I think we Come came on, second by like half a point. We did really well. We did really, really well. Sean Dooley was mm. excellent as well, actually. We, we had you won, you won the lucky dip. And I won the lucky dip. <laughs> and I won the lucky dip. And I was like, what I did can't. You get? I, I won like a cash prize. And I was like, I can't. <laughs> I can't take this. I can't keep. I can't come into their village and like leave with their money. But like, bye, yeah, guys. See ya. Like, no, 20 so quid I, behind I, the bar. I, it's yours. Yeah, yeah no, I, good. that's what I should have done. But I just gave it back and let somebody else spin. <laughs> but, but was it a nice atmosphere on set? I mean, it's it was. kind of. It's, yeah, no, it was, it was, it was great. I mean, it was quite funny because for me, at least, you know, um, when we were making this film, there were loads of other really big films going on at the same time. X-Men, War Horse, uh, Captain America, I think, and Hugo. Hugo as well. And they were all like really long, hard shoots and all my friends were on them and they were just going, this is hard. And we, <laughs> we were just having a great kind of really relaxed. Everyone was... When everyone you're smaller, you have to work faster. Yeah. So a lot of those really big films, they sometimes can be a bit lumbering and, you know, they shoot two, three, four setups a day and we're shooting like 25, 30. So yeah. it's a real thrash. But that creates its own energy, and I think people en enjoy that, really, don't they? And Jane, are you are you are you part of that process? Are you there on set, on set, and, and going through that process with I the film as well? I do like to be. Unfortunately, on this project, um, I was doing X Men at the same time, but yeah. I did because both were at Pinewood. There were many occasions where I sneaked out of X Men because <laughs> I would much rather have been with these guys <laughs> on our set here. Um, it, it was a lot more fun. <laughs> but but Jane was all through the edit. So yeah, nice. I was there through the edit, which was um, yeah. And no, I wish right. I could have been there more on I set, was, and it was kind of. Interesting interesting for me for this film because I was I was included in so much more of the process than I've ever been on Potter because Potter's such a massive machine yeah um, you don't really get to see all of the moving parts whereas in this James had me in meetings with mm. you and Jane really early on about the script and you know I watched you in costume fittings and in, in, in like in every, I actually feel like I learned more about direction from watching James than I have in the 10 years because I was I was privy to so much more of, yeah. of the of the of how things are run kind of day to day and the kind of decisions you have to make and also just the way James the thing I kind of you know love about one of the things I love about James is that he uses every opportunity to continue telling the story like it be it through makeup or costume through details and things that that kind of give, bring nuance to characters and like he finds lots of opportunities for those stories to be told. How do you, as a director, how do you build tension? 
I, I mean, it's uh, it's not an, a, a question you can answer, I guess, immediately and stuff. But in in this film, in particular, there's so many different ways that that tension builds. Is it is it is mm -hmm. that an, is it an easy thing to achieve, or is it is that kind of the the hardest part, I guess, on a film like this? It, it's a, it's a leap of faith. I mean, I guess the first thing is to say you've got to try and create a character that people believe in and want to go on a journey with. And yes. so that's something that we all work very hard at. So there's a lot of films where a lot of kind of thriller slasher nasty you know horror films where the, the lead characters they're just fodder they're just there to be killed you know and so we thought if we take our time and it's slow burn and we get to know dan's character that's always going to help because people are rooting for him yeah and then when you're in then when you're building up the horror we also talked about this it's kind of like the way i suspect and i don't do comedy at all but i suspect it's the way a comedian builds a joke you know you they, you work it and you have an idea and you think it works, then you test it out on people and you test it again and refine it and recalibrate it. And there was a lot of that that we did. I mean, constantly, you know, you, you acquire all the material on set and then in the edit, there's, there's a lot of, you know, we had lots of screenings. We had, you know, really just three people in the edit and then five and then a little screening room and again and again and we get friends in and yeah. family in and we just try and, you know, you just, because you, but weirdly for this, we always thought less is more. Yeah. And so... That, that's where the leap of faith really comes in because you have, to, you have to kind of be brave and say, look, you know, you get people say, well, we need more of the woman black. We need more of the woman black. And we're like, no, actually, that's not going to be more scary. It's going to be less scary. Yeah. And just, just hold it back and let people, you know, let their imaginations go to work. Well, there's, uh, we're going to show a, another clip right now. I mean, amazing kind of supporting cast as well in this film. Um, Kieran Hines, who plays Daly. Uh, this is a, a great uh, little clip with you when, you when you're not quite sure what's going on with the village and this is when you sort of try and start to work out what's going on. <laughs> yes! Oh, that's, 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 that's why we do it. I watched that three times before we came out and I still jump out my seat that, there. That's one, of, that's one of the smaller scares. Yeah, that really is. That's like one of the kind of... That's, that's one of the more easy ones early on, really. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Dan, I, I want to ask you about this because this was this was obviously the first Post Potter yeah. film that we've seen you in, and, and I guess that was a big decision that you had to make in terms of what you chose to do. I mean, I suppose it, it was, but or did you not I, think the decision it like was that? made really easy by Jane's script? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it really was. Like, I mean, I, I read it and I hadn't read anything like it, and I hadn't read anything. You know, it was beautifully written. Like, parts of it for, for something with so much stage direction, it was so readable, and I read it so quickly, and it was. You know, parts of it read like a novel. It was it was wonderful. And and you know, when you get something of that quality, and and then you know, I met James a, a few days later, and we kind of established that you know, our vision of the film was the same as being not just a horror film, but something with real heart and real characters. And not in three D. And not in three D. That was the first thing we talked about. <laughs> <laughs> we, thought we really don't need to, if any film doesn't need three D, it's this one. Um, and um, uh, but, but so yeah, and so once I'd read it, I, I, I knew that I wanted, I wanted to be a part of it. I wanted to be a part of telling that story. And I, I feel incredibly fortunate that this, that this came along when it did. And you know, I always knew that I wanted to do something straight away after finishing Potter, mm. otherwise I would have just gone crazy. And, um, and, and I'm so glad that this came along and, and it was, I just feel incredibly lucky to have been a part of it. Um, I, w I want to ask about the Hammer thing as well, because obviously this is part of the whole relaunch of, of Hammer and stuff. Did that... Did that, I don't know, did it, did it add anything to the film? I mean, did it make it feel or... It's a nice association. Yeah. You know, it's a classic British horror brand. Yeah. But um, I wouldn't have done the film simply because it's Hammer. I did the film because it was Jane's script. Yeah. I mean, and, I mean, for me as well, it's as somebody who's been a part of the British film industry kind of all their life, I mean, as, as have James and Jane, but, um, but you know, I, I did take, and also having worked with so many people whose fathers and mothers worked on the original Hammer movies, as I have, like, it, do. I do. Wow. it is a source of pride to be involved in the resurgence of the studio. But the film is, is first and foremost, you know, it is a, is a James Watkins yeah. film rather than a, you know, a Hammer film. But, yeah. it's, but, it is, but there, are, there, are, there are certain moments where... We're mindful, I don't, mindful I don't, of certain I, traditions, I, aren't we? Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't think, Hammer, I think Hammer fans will be quite pleased with this film. Of fans of well, classic it feels Hammer. Like a is, re it feels yeah. like an introduction to a whole new generation of, of to, to, to a great legacy, I guess, that's already there in British film. And if nothing else, hopefully if they love this, they'll maybe go back and, and look at some of those fantastic old... old Not all of them, though, hopefully. Not, Not all, all of them. That's the thing, people there never talk some, about the later stages. <laughs> some they should maybe avoid, <laughs> hopefully. Yeah. Um, I'd like to throw out to the audience, yeah. if that's okay, for some questions, because we've got such a huge audience here um, today. Well, uh, this is the hardest part of where we start. Um, so I've got a gentleman there with a the microphone. So someone over here who wants to ask a question, raise your hand. Just behind you. Please tell me your name as well before you ask a question. Hi, I'm Yasmin from Brazil. 
And then my questions for you. I'd like to know, you now you tried a horror movie. What's your next step? What kind of movie you have in your goal list? Um, well, I'm playing the, the next the next film I'm doing is uh, is a, a movie called Kill Your Darlings, uh, which is about uh, <laughs> yes, a comedy, as you can all tell. Um, <laughs> it's and uh, I'm playing a um, a 19 year old Allen Ginsberg in a film about uh, a murder that formed the Beat Generation. Um, it's an amazing story. It's a true story, which not which not a lot of people know. Um, and yeah, we start filming in March, so that's that's next. So that's I'm I'm not looking past that one at the moment, to be honest. That's a big enough challenge. Do you know who your fellow poets are yet? Uh, I know I know who two of them are. I uh, well I I know that uh, Jack Kerouac is being played by Jack Houston. Yeah. I don't know if anybody watches Boardwalk Empire, but he's, he's the, the chap with the with the face, face mask. Yeah. Thing. Uh, he's much better looking, obviously, in real life. Um, and um, and uh, Lizzie Olson is playing um, Edie Parker, Jack Kerouac's uh, wife or partner at the time. And um, a, guy, a guy, young guy called Dane DeHaan, okay. um, who, yeah, uh, who was in Chronicle, um, who's the, I believe, the character called Andrew in Chronicle, I think. Um, and he's amazing, and he's playing, he's not one of the poets, he's not somebody you necessarily know, a guy called Lucian Carr. But he was very influential on all their lives, and I, and I kind of fell in love with him. So Great. That's next. Excellent. Next question, please. Lady at the front here in the green top. Uh, this question's for Daniel, too. What would you say was the most difficult part in your role for the woman in black? This, um, I, th there is a scene towards <laughs> the end of the film um, where I am recovering something from a marsh, from this kind of muddy pit um, for which they dug a, a, a sort of 10-foot long, 5-foot wide, 5-foot deep pit and filled it with m what looks like mud is actually kind of like Uh, kids TV show type gunge sort of thing you get on get your own back if anyone remembers <laughs> that um, and um, and so um, but brown and then yeah that was sort of it was two days in that um, so you know it, it's 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 not always pretty but that's what I was being paid for um, and it was and it was and it was you know and at the moment when you're filming a scene like that you just kind of keep thinking you know it's going to look great in the film it's going to look great in the film and that those thoughts can sort of keep you warm Two days. Two days necessary, James, really? Two days? <laughs> They were. I think it might have been three. It was, fr it was freezing as well. What he didn't say is how cold it was. I mean, we had a medic on set for hypothermia because it was, I mean, it was wow. really properly cold and he had to come out and we had a heat room and we had hot drinks and all sorts of stuff because it, was, it wasn't, wasn't nice. It's not really something you can practice for either, is it? Well, like I, I have, though, for 10 years. So <laughs> it's sort of, it, you know... Um, <laughs> Uh, Keep yeah, it useful no, it was, then. It was, it, okay. it, it was actually fun. There was one moment when I kind of, I was, I was very much aware that, uh, you know, I wanted to come up looking like the scene in Apocalypse Now. And the first time I did it, I looked more like Al Jolson. For, <laughs> for anyone who gets that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Let's ask the next question. Uh, we'll work our way across. Uh, lady in the middle there. Um, so this is directed in general, but when you put so much work I mean, so, so much time into your work, does it ever come home with you? Like, because this is a horror story, are you ever at home and looking in the mirror and go, wow, or <laughs> what are those things? Uh, uh, weirdly, actually, we had one, one time when we were shooting at night, when we were, doing, we were doing the night shoot at the railway station, and I got home one night, and it must have been about four in the morning, I was having a cup of tea downstairs, and, you know, you're kind of all quite buzzed after filming, and it's hard to sleep, and... and uh, I don't know, weirdly, like the postman came really early in the morning around the side door and, and this face just appeared at the window. <laughs> oh. And I, I properly jumped, jumped some art. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, the, the only thing, I mean, not, not, not particularly, but I mean, there was, in terms of your work following you home, they, um, I, uh, when they were showing us the posters for the concept posters for America for this film, I don't think the poster's out here, but there's a poster in America that's literally, it's a photograph of two children with their eyes scratched out in sort of sepia, and it says, what did they see? And um, I got up one night, and somebody brought this around to my house to show me, and, and, and I, it was just in my apartment, and I, I, I you know, jumped about a mile into the air when I walked across <laughs> the room and saw these two eyeless children staring at me. <laughs> But you had, uh, in the film, uh, your son is played by your godson. My godson, yes, my, my real-life godson, because I... Um, I You know, obviously people have spent the best part of 10 years seeing me in a schoolboy outfit, so I thought it might be a bit of a leap for people to then see me as a father. And one of the things that I thought, and, and James and I talked about as, as something that would really help that, is if the relationship between my son and I feels real. And, um, and we auditioned sort of five or six boys, and some of them were possibly kind of, they were slightly older and were maybe more accomplished actors than Misha, but there was really no substitute for the having a natural chemistry there with, with, uh, with him. So that, and it does, it really helped. It helped me in the film and it certainly helped him. What I didn't realize at the time 
that we were filming was he's actually very good. Like, he's given a really good performance. He's, 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 he's really good in the movie. So I was um, very pleased to see that when I finally saw it. Yeah, don't do it. Too young yet. Too young. You're no. too young. Don't do it I, yet. Yeah, I, mean, I, I didn't <laughs> say that to him. I, you know, his mum's his mom's a theatre director, so she can put him on the right path. <laughs> Quite right. Okay, next question, please. Um, lady just there. Hi, uh, this question's for Daniel. Um, after working on Broadway, I was just curious how that influenced your work back onto film, and if you took anything from that experience with you to work in this movie. Uh, well, I haven't, I haven't worked yet since I did Broadway, because this was done before I did How to Succeed. Um, this, we filmed this at the beginning, uh, the, the end of the year before last, so it was, I don't know what year we're in now, so I can't possibly hope <laughs> to work that out. But, um, but it was, um, but yeah, so we, I was actually doing um, dance rehearsals like in my hotel room when I went back after filming this at night and and so yeah it, it's been the other way around but I but I I'm actually really looking forward to it especially doing a like having done a comedy on Broadway and having had like being being sent out there every night with a mission to entertain and make people laugh it's kind of kind of a gift as an actor like it's just the best the most fun feeling in the world so I, I you know I'm I'm too I'm curious to see what effect that has <laughs> Did did you know you did you know you could you could do that or was that a, was that kind of was that a nice sort of I don't know or had you always wanted to go down that uh, the kind of musical theatre yeah. um, I'd always I'd always loved musicals because my mum and dad I grew up with them just on in the car all the time so like, I'd always really enjoyed them and and I hadn't thought it would be something I would do until a lot later in my career perhaps but. Um, you know, it happened now, and, 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 and you know, it came along at the right time, and I learned to dance for it, and I never would have learned to dance if I hadn't had to do that, and I, and I you know, I, lo I enjoy singing, and so, yeah, it was just, it was, I wouldn't say I knew I could do it at all, mm. but I definitely, you know, I definitely wanted to at some point. Yeah. I just never, I never thought I'd dance. I never, ever thought I'd dance. Um, that, I was like, I said to the director of the show, I said, like, singing, I'm having lessons, acting, well, you know, that's fine, but the dancing will, like, never happen. <laughs> Get rid of the idea from your mind, it won't happen. And there we go. Yeah, Two I was, weeks later, I was wrong. Leg warmers were on. <laughs> pineapple, here we go. Um, next question, please. Um, where's the microphone? Let's get some. Just the lady beside you would be great. Thank you. Hi, um, this is a general question. Um, what's your first reaction to seeing a film after working on it for so long, especially like something like this? Would, are you still scared? Because I've seen that advert so many times and I still manage to scream. <laughs> like, do you, like, I don't know, do you expect it? exactly how you thought it was going to be or or not just this film any film especially with daniel like with harry potter like um i don't know what did voldemort look like uh, <laughs> well you know i mean in terms of that stuff it's always amazing because you always go wow that that looks so much better now um but but yeah I mean, it's it's always strange seeing a film for the first time there's so much else that you're looking at you're not really focused on the story you don't watch it as an audience member there's you're you're picking it apart basically and me a lot less so than you i mean you just tear everything you do to pieces Presumably <laughs> as a first process, yeah. Um, but I mean, yeah, it's 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 odd. Um, there were some things that had gone into the film which I didn't know about, which really did scare me. Um, uh, the 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 window moment from the trailer, actually, I didn't know about. Um, I don't think I'd heard. It's terrifying. Yeah, no, it's really scary. And there's another moment uh, which you'll enjoy. Um, and if, if you like that one, um, but but yeah, it's you know, it, it's it is kind of always slightly odd. I think seeing it. Yeah, I mean, I've seen it thousands of times, so all through the process, and so has Jane. So you, you, don't, you don't have that distance, I suppose. I think it stops scaring you, but the yeah. nicest thing is watching it with an audience, mm. and uh, that's, that's the most, always the most surprising and thrilling you time thing. the jumps, don't you? Yeah. You sit and count. <laughs> sit and count, and you just sort of go, it's going to come, and then, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I mean, it's, there's nothing more gratifying than watching an audience... Being totally scared out of their minds. That Spilling makes me sound a bit popcorn. sick. No, 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 no. I'm with you. Totally. Like, I, always, I do always pick like, the frailest looking member of the audience and just watch them <laughs> for the entire show. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, 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 no, I'm sure it wouldn't be you. I can find frailer than you. Um, but yeah, no, it's, and it's, it is actually, you know, it is very good fun. What yeah. no one tells you about doing a horror film, though, is that you, you don't actually judge how scary it is by the screams. You judge it by how how loud and long the nervous laughter after the scream <laughs> is, which is that's what's great because in that moment of fear you become totally unselfconscious and you make a silly face or jump or do something, and everyone kind of sees that happen and sort of just laughs at each other afterwards. Oh, won't be silly? We were just scared by that by that film. But you know, but it's 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 a, it's a lovely thing watching it with a crowd. That must be kind of really gratifying watching it with that crowd and seeing you've scared the bejesus out of people, and seeing <laughs> seeing what they've you know they've done. Yes, another one jumped out of their seat. <laughs> <laughs> Popcorn everywhere. <laughs> uh, let's get another question, please. This gentleman here. Then let's have another one from over here. Hello. Hi, my name is Derek. 
Uh, Daniel, you mentioned what you're working on next. I was wondering uh, what James and Jane are working on next. Um, I've got sort of the usual story. I've got two or three things circling. I've got a project in the States. I've got a couple of projects here. Um, and it's, it's all going to be about who, who gives me the money, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Show me the money, basically. I like it. Jane? Um, I'm working on um, two projects at the moment. Um, one's a, a fantasy film um, that the uh, script is being overseen by Tim Burton, which is very, very exciting. Wow. Um, and it's an adaptation of a book called Miss Peregrine's Home for a Peculiar Children. Um, and the other one's an awesome sci-fi movie um, uh, based on an awesome comic called Non-Player. Okay. What, can I ask about Kick-Ass? You that, can. What is, uh, you might, I mean, that film was just incredible. <laughs> oh, thank I'm, you. I'm, are we, are we going to get another one? Please, can we have another one? Well. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, we, there might be a Kick-Ass too, but I'm not sure if myself or Matthew Vaughan would be um, coming back in our previous roles. <laughs> Hit Girl Offshoot? Something. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. I don't know. No, I mean, there, there may well be one, but I think someone else will write and direct. Okay. But I would like to see that too. Okay, <laughs> good. Um, yeah. I'm afraid this is last question. So whoever raises. She's been desperate. Okay, go on, Dan. <laughs> he picked it. Yes. <laughs> see, I hate. This is my worst part of the job. The lady over there. Where are you from? What's your name? Uh, hi, my name is Anna. Uh, I live here in London. First of all, thank you. And just thank you for the past 10 years because I've been a huge fan since oh. forever. Uh, I'm curious, how did you prepare for the role? Uh, because there's the play, there's the book. Uh, did that. Uh, take part in what you're preparing? Um, I actually, I stayed away from, obviously I read the book as soon as I read the script because I knew I'd be meeting James and wanted to talk about it and want, you know, wanted to be able to have an opinion. Um, but really my research into this, it was really about kind of getting into Arthur's head and learning a bit about you know, how he has been affected by the loss of his wife. I mean, I spoke to um, a bereavement counsellor for a couple of hours just to kind of get an idea of what his relationship would have been like with his son given that his wife died during childbirth. Um, and, and, you know, and actually I spoke to a couple of friends about about depression and one of the things they said which really struck me was that you know how exhausting physically exhausting it is um and so that's kind of where i started with arthur was that just from, from the first moment you see him he is physically and mentally at the end of his tether and and kind of is just putting one foot in front of the other and and, ex and doing nothing more than existing really um and so then it was uh, yeah that was i suppose how i kind of prepared for this and just tried to you know and and, and worked with and just stuck very close to james in terms of you know, um, on learning a couple of uh, well, also, also, I think one of the things about, you know, Dan has got a lot of energy, he's a very high energy guy, and Arthur is very damped down, you know, he's, he's shut down by grief, and, and Dan worked fantastically hard to, 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 to shift and morph himself into that role, and, you know, I'm, I'm really proud of what he's done. Um, thank you so much for thank your you time. Guys. Thank you, and thank um, you so much for everyone being here for your questions. Right, thank you very much. We, that's what we try to be true to, really. Yeah, location as well in this film seems so important, and and how how British it looks, but also just how terrifying those actual physical things, mm. I guess, add to the to the well, whole. It's interesting because the Americans are so brilliant at mythologizing their landscape. You know, you see you go to, you see L.A. on film, you see New York, you see mm. you know Monument Valley and westerns, whatever it is, and we've got such brilliant landscape here. We've got such brilliant sort of architecture and iconography and, 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 and we should represent it. We should, you know, get those British things on film. Yeah. And um, so it's such an opportunity and, and so as British filmmakers, that's sort of what we want to do. And fog. Great fog. fog. <laughs> which we were just about to see in this clip, which is uh, when, uh, when Arthur gets to the, the house for the first time and, uh, and he leaves to, to kind of uh, explore these things that he thinks he's seeing and hearing. So let's have a look at this clip. Stopped it there. Oh, we stopped it there uh, for yeah. a reason. <laughs> we don't want a classic ghost story. It's got all the ingredients, um, and I love that it has a real emotional heart to it, as well as being absolutely terrifying. And that was what we all wanted the film to be. As yeah. Well. Were you were, were you terrified when you read the book? Is it the type of book, having not read it, that does terif terrify you off the page? Yeah, it definitely does. It's definitely a book you don't want to sort of read on your own in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> and in terms of, of then translating that for, for the big screen, was it an easy process for you, being, being such a fan of it as well? Um, it, was, it was an interesting process. I mean, I think you always um, want to add layers for a film. Um, yeah. And, uh, but yeah, being a fan of it, it was just important to me to stay true to the spirit of it. But most of all, to um, you know, uh, just 
to hope that I could uh, carry over that, the, the way of making people care about Arthur and yeah. making it as frightening as possible. And hopefully I did my job. And yeah. then <laughs> Dan and James uh, added to that in space. Well, that, I mean, Balance. there was a, there were, you know, one of the things I loved was the fact that, that I got to this chunk in the middle of the script, which was about 15 pages with no dialogue. <laughs> and you just never see that, ever. Um, and no one's mad enough to try and do that. The artist has slightly rained on our parade, really. We thought our 20 minutes, <laughs> our 20 minutes of silence in the middle of the movie was a little bit impressive. And We're then scarier. the artist... Uh, yeah, we are much scarier. Um, the artist has no scares. Um, but, um, yeah, so, uh, you know, that, I forgot what I was talking about. Somebody else, carry on. <laughs> Am I getting that balance right? Yeah, about it go. being, you know, the depth of the, the There's story. There's a lot of films out now that are gory, yeah. violent, um, but that's not necessarily... You know, nasty isn't the same as scary, and our film is scary. You know, it gives people a real roller coaster ride, but it does so by working through, you know, through shadows, through darkness, through working on the imagination. Yeah. And actually, we always talked about this that what you can imagine, you know, once your brain gets to work, is always going to be scarier than anything you can shoot. And that was what was in Susan's book, and that was what's in Jane's script. And you know, it's James, f for you, um, what was the appeal for this, this project? It was Jane's script. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think probably the same for you. It, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, the fact that it was, um, you know, it was a horror film, but it felt unusual for the genre in that it did have, you know, really well-developed characters and, and uh, they didn't, the characters didn't feel like they had just been uh, there to set up scares later yeah, yeah. on. They felt like real people and real relationships. And, um, yeah, and to get, a, to get a horror film that is so strong thematically as well in terms of dealing with loss and grief and about what happens to us if we can't move on from a loss. Um, you know, that seemed unusual to me and I like anything that's a little bit off the beaten track. Well, yeah, and it, it's what's, what's great about it as well. Is it's, it's, it's so um, authentic and unique out there, I think, as well in terms of that genre, in terms of it doesn't rely on anything apart from great characters, a great story, depth, emotion, but also that scare factor and getting that right is really important, I think. Please uh, welcome to the stage uh, a lady who has given us such brilliant films uh, with her incredible writing talent, uh, amongst those X-Men, Kick-Ass and uh, Stardust. Uh, a man who scared the bejesus out of me with uh, Eden Lake and has now done the same with this. Uh, and uh, another gentleman who needs no introduction, Jane Goldman, James Watkins and Daniel Radcliffe. Hi. 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 Wow. What a great turnout we have for yeah, you all. Yeah, it's amazing. Hello, everybody. Um, <laughs> we, we've got to start off by saying congratulations, an amazing opening week you've had in the States as well, which is absolutely brilliant for, for, for a British film and, and for you all, so congratulations on that. Um, Jane, can I start with you? Um, because Thank the words you. Have, have come from you, which obviously came from the, uh, the original novel. What was it about this, this project, this book that, that caught your attention that you wanted to... Well, I think The Woman in Black is just the perfect cl 